Welcome back everyone to 28storms.com. This is a special 1Z update for Tropical Cyclone Yasi on this February 2nd, 2011. Unfortunately, things continue to look pretty grim for portions of the coast of Queensland, Australia, and I'll explain why as we go on throughout this video. First of all, here's the latest satellite frame from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, and you see clearly a very well-defined, significant tropical cyclone at this point in time with nearly perfect outflow channels. This is what we consider the equa equatorward outflow channel, and then down to the south is the poleward outflow channel. This looks like a classic tropical cyclone. You can't get much better than if there was anything to complain about in terms of the overall structure of the storm is that it is a little bit lopsided over to its northeast with a, a bit less convection on the southwest quadrant of this storm system. Now here is a visible satellite loop and unlike yesterday the storm now has a well-defined eye which is of course an obvious indication that the storm has become much better organized and has intensified further over the last 24 hours. Now here is the general location of Cairns and you have some smaller towns just south of there, like Gordon, Vale, Malanda, and then Innisfal just to the south. All these areas should be considered to be under the gun at this point in time. Uh, there's still an outside chance that the eye passes directly over Cairns. Either way, it's going to come very close and still more than likely produce devastating, devastating impacts in that area. But also those areas that I mentioned that are just south of Cairns need to be uh, just as much on guard and final preparations need to be made ASAP uh, because the timing between now and landfall is beginning to really diminish with time here. Um, here is a latest look at the standard infrared image and once again this is a very well defined system at this point. Uh, we have another weather system over the southern Pacific Islands which is just acting to enhance the outflow channels to the east here and uh, this is just a very good indication that the upper level environment is favorable for this storm system to continue to maintain itself or slightly intensify before the storm makes landfall. Uh, once again, here is an en enhanced infrared loop and we see the clearly well-defined eye and in the last few frames you'll notice that that eye is becoming more apparent. It's less cloud filled which is once again an indication that the storm has intensified slightly further. And finally, this is the latest water vapor loop. And once again, upper level conditions look very favorable from all quadrants of the storm system. If there is anything to complain about, it's this dry air in the southwest and over the northeastern portion of the Australian continent over Queensland. Some of this dry air may be intruding into the inner circulation just a bit, um, but that's pretty much the only limiting factor at this point in time. Now, here's a look at some of the precipital precipitable water over the last several days and I always like to show this to give you an overall perspective of what has been happening over the last few days and of course the storm started off further toward the east and at the time it was just a weak tropical storm and as you can see over the last couple of days it has become a tightly wound up beast of a tropical cyclone that really cannot be messed with at this point in time. Now here is a more three-dimensional image of the storm and I have to give credit to the Sims website the University of Wisconsin for providing a lot of these satellite images. This is a really good website that you may want to check out. And basically this is a loop virtually over the last 24 hours of the inner core of the storm structure and again it's just nearly perfect. Uh, there might be some dry air intrusion coming in in the last few frames but again it's not a whole lot. I'm not expecting hardly any weakening before landfall. Now here's the latest forecast from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. Uh, maximum sustained winds according to their office is now up to 120 knots which would make this a powerful category 4 hurricane in the Atlantic Basin. Definitely not a storm to play around with. It would be getting a major media attention up here just as much as it is down in Queensland at the moment and the forecast remains virtually unchanged with landfall just south of Cairns but not by much at all with the city definitely experiencing significant winds, damaging winds in fact uh, in fact, devastating winds. It's as simple as that. The latest forecast from the Bureau of Meteorology is also virtually unchanged. It is also now considered to be a severe tropical cyclone or a Category 5 based on their uh, categor categorization scale. And we now have cyclone warnings and watches up for much of the Queensland coast. And you cannot ignore these gales further inland as well because even though this storm is going to significantly weaken after it spends quite a few hours over land, it's such an intense storm that even these inland areas are going to have gale force winds in all likelihood. So areas in that 
uh, portion of the globe need to also be keeping this in mind, along with the possibility of some flooding and a couple isolated weak tornadoes, as some of those outer bands are often tornado producers. Here's a look at some of the upper-level winds, and uh, we have a lot of upper-level upper divergence over the storm system. This, once again, is a very favorable environment. This map shows it a little bit better for this video. Now, basically, what this shows is that all of these blue areas are areas with less than 10 to 15 knots of vertical wind shear, and that's a very positive sign for tropical cyclone intensification. Uh, tropical cyclones like little to no wind shear so that they can have more room and time to organize, and that's exactly what the storm system has. A quick look at the steering parameters shows that the overall uh, scenario here has not changed at all. We still have a powerful mid-level ridge near the coast of New Zealand that's staying in place for the foreseeable future, and that's just going to continue to push the storm system into Queensland. Now, in fact, the storm system is getting so close to the coastline that now the Cairns radar loop is beginning to pick up the cyclone structure. Uh, this is looking out 512 kilometers, and we're beginning to see signs of the inner circulation around this area passing near Willis Island. And we already have some of the outer bands beginning to impact portions of the coastline. So people in that area, well, first of all, hopefully they evacuated. But if you're deciding, deciding to just hunker down and ride the storm out, now is the time to start finalizing all of your preparations and find a, a safe spot indoors, or at least a, as much of a safe spot as you can find for this particular storm system. Now, in this particular video, I'm not going to delve too far into the local or latest model guidance because at this point it's pretty self-explanatory. The storm is going to be making landfall within 24 hours. And the models show virtually no change in the, the progression or the movement of the storm. They show it continuing in the same general trajectory all the way until it gets into almost central Australia. And a quick look at the intensity forecasts from the model guidance. Uh, still, some models show some slight intensification just before landfall. Uh, we cannot rule that out at this time. And then all of this down here is the storm beginning to weaken as it continues to move inland. So thanks again for checking out 28storms.com. Like I said in the previous video, we are primarily a United States weather-related website, but we cover major storm topics around the globe, and this is certainly one of them. And we've got a lot of positive feedback out of Australia over the last day or so. So we will continue to make these updates, and we, we may even decide to expand our website to include some Australian coverage more consistently. So uh, please continue to give us some feedback or go ahead and reply to this video and tell us if there's any changes that can be made and we'll definitely take your thoughts into consideration. Uh, in the meantime, all residents along coastal Queensland, please continue to hunker down for this storm. This is not a storm to play around with and we wish you the best here at 28storms.com.